Hey guys, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am live right now on YouTube, so come on and enjoy me. I want to talk to you guys about spirit communication and how we can send messages to our loved ones on the side, because you may have noticed that your loved ones have already been sending little messages to you. How do our loved ones send messages? They send messages using signs. Signs are anything that reminds you of a loved one that is passed on. It could be a butterfly, dragonfly, repeating number, a certain song, a certain fragrance, a certain dream. But the secret is, is that we can actually send messages to our loved ones in spirit as well. And the way to do that is by understanding the way that spirit communicates, the way that their world works, the way that they reach us, why they reach us in the way that, that they do, and how we can reach them back. So first of all, I see all of you who are live right now with me. I see Alicia, uh, excuse me, Alicia is here. Mary Jordan is here. Debbie C is here. Lizzie is here. Marisol is here. I also see uh, Ben is here as well. And if you guys are watching the replay, hello to all of you as well. And first of all, I'm not sure if you guys heard, but I just added brand new tour dates to my online reading schedule and to my, and to my live event schedule. So that being said, in just two weeks, I'm back on the road. I'm coming back from paternity leave. I'm heading to Detroit, Michigan. Then I'm coming to uh, Cabazon, Cabazon, California, where I'll be giving readings at Morongo. Then I'm coming to Lancaster, California, where I'll be coming to the Lancaster Performing Arts Center. I'm also coming to Orange Park, Florida. I am coming to St. Louis, Missouri. I'm coming to Concord, New Hampshire, Worcester, Massachusetts, Biloxi, Mississippi, a bunch of places, including, including Newark, New Jersey, and, and Rutland, Vermont. It's all up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. So if you'd like a reading and to connect with someone in spirit, you've got to attend a live event. All right. So let's talk about this because the one thing that I want you to know, okay, is that every single medium communicates with the other side in one main way. And that is through thoughts. The other side uses energy to communicate with us. And a lot of people ask me, well, what does that mean? You know, how is it that we communicate with our loved ones? Well, you may have heard me speak about this in different videos, that when we talk to our loved ones, our loved ones in spirit hear us. Well, what I want you to know is people ask me, how is that possible? How do we really know that they hear us? How do, they, how do we really know that they're listening to us? So I want to explain that to you. What I want you to know is, first of all, energy travels. We can actually send a thought, and it doesn't have to be to the dead. We send thoughts all the time. For example. When you send healing thoughts to somebody, when you're, when you're praying for somebody, thinking positive things, sending positive messages to somebody who is sick here in this world or needs a little bit of your help, it's not wishful thinking. You're actually sending a piece of your energy to be with that person and to help them to heal just by thinking positive thoughts. When you're thinking negative thoughts, right, you're actually sending that energy to other people as well. That's the reason why when you're in a fight with somebody, when you're angry with somebody, when somebody is mad at you, when they're upset with you, you can feel that thought. Has it ever happened when someone's angry with you, upset with you, all of a sudden you can feel that thought. It's almost like it makes you sick. It makes you tired. It makes you feel overwhelmed. Well, it's because thoughts are energy. And what's amazing is that our loved ones in spirit are energy as well. Remember, there's all energy within us. Our soul is that. It's energy. So when we transition on, when we go to the other side, our soul, our soul enters into an energy, energy space. That's what heaven is. And for that reason, we can communicate with our loved ones anytime, anywhere. How? Through our thoughts. Literally, anytime, because I've asked the spirit world about this. I've asked, how much do you really hear? How much do you really know when, when we're talking to you? And the spirit world has told me this. The spirit world has told me that any time that we think a message to them about them or talk about them, immediately they're alerted in heaven. It's instantaneous. When you say, mom, I really wish that you were here right now. Dad, I really wish that you were seeing this. When you say to your, when you say to your loved ones in spirit, I really hope that you're helping me through this time. Instantly, instantly. It's like a light bulb goes off in heaven and your loved one on the other side is um is alerted and thank you so much jackie for the super chat oh my god she's so sweet i, I love jackie is one of my top fans by the way she's always on here on on youtube she's a long time jackie's a long time client of mine thank you so much for that and what i want you to know is this and thank you by the way for the outfit that you sent royce i got that as well what i want you guys to know is this what i want you to know is that those thoughts are very powerful because they are messages and what i want you to know as well 
is that that's the reason why we dream of our loved ones. Have you ever had a dream of your loved one where literally you were standing in the same room with, with them during the dream? You could feel them during the dream. You got emotional during the dream. You could hug them, touch them, kiss them in the dream. But what I want you to know is that if that's ever happened to you, you visited your loved one in spirit. That was a very real experience. And because your loved ones are energy, they're able to get into our thoughts in that way. It's the reason why sometimes you might hear your loved one speaking to you in your thoughts. Has that ever happened to you? Leave it in the comments. Has it ever happened where you're working on something and you can feel your loved one in spirit guiding you? It's almost like you hear their voice. It's deep down inside of you telling you to go towards a certain direction or to do something within your life. Maybe it's something simple, like you're making a recipe that was your grandmother's who had passed away. And you can swear that you hear her deep within your subconscious telling you, you know, add a little bit more salt, add a little bit more pepper. I see that Don is saying, yes, that's happened to her. Alicia is saying, yes, that happened to her. A special K saying, yes, that happened to them. What I want you to know is that your loved ones speak through those thought waves. That's one of the main ways that they communicate with us and even me as a medium. And at the same time, that's the reason why they're able to, to visit us in our dreams. When we go to sleep, okay, our mind, excuse me, our body shuts down, but our mind processes all the thoughts of the day. We have all of this electricity going through our brain, sorting away, sorting away, sorting away. And what happens is, is when that hap when, when our, that energy space opens up in our head, that's when our loved ones in spirit can actually slip into a dream of ours to talk to us, reach us, and communicate with us. Now, what I want you to know is that they don't come all the time. But when there is a direct message that they have to tell us, they will try to come and reach us in many different ways. And because your loved ones are energy, one of the things is, is that's the reason why sometimes we can feel them in different ways. Sometimes when we're connecting with our loved ones, we can feel like somebody just walked by us. Sometimes we can feel a little chill that goes by us when we're thinking about them or reminiscing about times that we had with them. Sometimes what, what happens as well is that if a loved one is walking by you or if a loved one's in the room with you, all of a sudden the weird things might start to happen with electricity. The light might start to flicker. All of a sudden, next thing you know, um, light might start to flicker. Next thing you know, uh, next, next thing you know, the volume on the TV turns on. The TV turns on by itself. Weird static comes through, you know, the telephone or comes through the, the radio. It's not your loved one trying to scare you. It's just the opposite. It's your loved one's energy that's causing that to happen. So I'm telling you this for one reason. I'm telling you this because the more that you learn about how they communicate with us, we learn about how powerful our, th our thoughts are. And thank you so much, Susan, for the um, super chat. And thank you so much to Life in Progress as well. What I want you to know is that thoughts are so powerful because literally your loved ones can hear you anytime that you want to get in touch with them. And by the way, they don't get mad when you talk to them. You can talk to them about anything, something that's bothering you, something that's upsetting you. And even if there was a conversation that you didn't get to have with them here in this world, you know, I'm telling you this because so many people write to me and they're like, Matt, do I have to be at my loved one's grave? Do I have to be at the cemetery to speak to them? Matt, my husband died in this house and I'm moving away and I'm, I'm afraid that he's not going to be with me. What I want you to know is that your loved ones are with you no matter what. They're with you anytime, anywhere, at any place. And all you have to do is speak to them. And literally, when you speak to your loved ones, you draw them in closer. So your loved ones love hearing from you. They love hearing about your life. And there's one reason for that. It's because when your loved one leaves this world, okay, when your loved one leaves this world, they want to see life through your eyes. And, you know, somebody asked me the other day on a radio show, show that was at some skeptic. And they said to me, Matt, if our loved ones are at peace, if our loved ones are safe on the other side, why are they so obsessed with our lives? And I'm like, well, no, they're not obsessed with our lives, you know, but they're happy for us. They want to see what it is that we're doing. They want to see the milestones that we're achieving. They want to see the great things that we're doing in our life. Because think about it. Your loved one went through this journey already. They've been through all of it. And now they want to see you go through that. It's almost like, it's almost like the same thing, okay? I can, I can speak to this now, now that I'm a parent, right? I was just thinking about this the other day. And I think it's a great analogy that, you know, as we're here in this world, we live an amazing life, right? And it might be challenging. It's hard. At times it's depressing. At times it's sad, but we live an amazing life. We go through huge, huge obstacles, huge challenges. We all have milestones. We all have achievements. We have highs and lows, but we make it through. Okay. Well, what I want you to know is that life changes when you have a child, right? Now I know what parents speak about, even though, you know, I have a newborn, 
It's amazing because I'm thinking about my son and I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't wait to see what he does in life. I can't wait to see what, you know, what he studied, what, what his uh, years in school are like. I want to see the friends that he's going to make. I want to see him get older. I want to see him graduate. I want to see, you know, what he's going to do with his life, what he's going to do with his career, what he's going to want to do in life, who he's going to end up with, you know, what life he's going to choose. I'm thinking all of these things right now. I can't wait to sit back and watch that. And it's amazing because my family was telling me, like my mom and dad, oh my God, I love seeing this. I remember when you were just a kid and now, now that we're retired and now that we have all this time, we love watching you. We love watching you with Royce and Alexa with Royce and we love seeing all these things. But why is that important? It's important because on the other side, your loved ones in spirit think the same way. Think about it. I don't care about what happened to me in high school because I've already been through that chapter of my life. I'm more excited to see it through my son's eyes when he goes through it, right? It's the same thing with your loved ones in spirit. They've been through their life. They've been through the challenges. They're on the other side. It's almost like they're in retirement. And now they're looking at you. They want to see what's going to happen in your life. And they're there to help you along the way. Your loved ones aren't just poof and gone on the other side. They don't just stop forgetting about you. They're there and they're with you. And what I want you to know, which is really amazing, is this. Is that what happens when our loved ones pass away is that on the other side, many times, they will help us in many divine ways. So what do I mean by that? I mean that because your loved ones lived life here in this world, because they lived their life journey, they know so much about you because they've experienced it with you firsthand. And then when they get to their side, they know also divine things about you. Why am I telling you this? So let me get to the chase. Because how many times do people lose a loved one here in this world? And right after they lose a loved one, something amazing happens and they get so pissed off. And they're like, oh my God, I wish my mother would have been here to see this. Oh my God, I wish my dad would have been here. I wish that my my um, my son would have saw this or my daughter would have saw this. So that they could have been here for this. What I want you to know is this, okay? What I want you to know is that on the other side, your loved ones take on divine tasks, which means that they are helping you in ways that you don't know. For example, I had this reading that I did where this woman here in this world, for years, she could not find love. She was in and out of relationships. She was with three different men, three different men she 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 was with for you know multiple years. She thought they were going to get engaged to her. She was waiting, waiting, waiting. And literally, they they all left her, went on to marry someone else and be with, with, be with other people. She was so depressed. She was so brokenhearted. She was so mad and angry where she said, you know what? That's it. I give up. I'm not going to find love anymore. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm going to accept my life the way that I, that, you know, I have it. And that was it. She basically put it off to the side and her mom kept saying to her, you know, before she passed, oh, I really hope that one day you find love. I'd love to leave this world knowing that you found somebody. And what was so amazing is that this woman devoted her whole time to her mom. When her mom got sick, when her mom was ailing, you know, because she like put her love, her love interests aside and, you know, that chapter aside, she literally spent, you know, the last couple of years of her mom's life, just taking care of her mom, being there for her mom. And her mom would always say to her, I want you to meet somebody. I want you to find someone good. You're such a good person. You're so compassionate. You have so much love. I want you to find love in your life too. Well, don't you know that the mother passed away? And when the mother passed away, her daughter didn't find love here in this world. She passed, she passed away watching her daughter live um, a lonely life. Well, isn't it, I, I shouldn't say, isn't it a coincidence? It's not, there is no such thing as coincidence, but coincidentally enough, okay, literally a year later, she met the most amazing person in her life. This guy who was uh, out of a, out of a past relationship, he had uh, gotten a divorce, he had children and literally he met her. The two of them clicked right away. He, uh, you know, he absolutely fell in love with her head over heels. She fell in love with him and they got married. And literally the moment that she called me up, she was so upset because she was like, oh my God, my mom didn't see any of this. My mom didn't see, you know, my, my husband, she didn't see this. She didn't see that. She didn't see the other thing when really it was her mother, her mother in spirit. When she got to the other side, made this all happen. She saw who her soulmate was supposed to be. She was. She saw who she was supposed to be with and her mom somehow got them connected. Well, that's what our loved ones do. It's the reason why I've seen this time and time again. You know, this particular woman, it was so sad because here in this world, she felt like she was lost in life. You know, because of the fact that she couldn't find love here in this world, what was so tough was 
She didn't get to have children. She didn't get to have a family. When her mom passed, she felt like she lost everything. So next thing you know, this man came in who had children of his own, who loved and accepted her like she was a second mom to them. She did become a second mom. She became their stepmom. And literally she found a family after her mom had passed. And she's doing fantastic right here and right now. And it was because her mom had helped her. This is what I'm trying to tell you is that your loved ones in spirit want to do the same thing for you. There's so many people who say to me, Matt, my dad passed. And right away after, after my dad passed, you know, um, I was, I was able to open up that dream business. I was able to find, you know, a business partner to go in with me. All these doors just opened right after my dad passed. All these doors opened after my mom's passed. Well, why do you think that is? It's because your loved one is there and helping you. And that's what's so amazing. So I'm telling you this for one reason, because if you feel like your loved one missed out on something, please know that they didn't. Please know that you can fill them in on anything of your, of your life. They already know. But I'm also telling you this for another reason, because sometimes our loved ones don't help us until we ask them for help. So important. So I'm telling you this because you need to go and sometimes ask your loved ones for divine assistance. How? By using that message, by, by using that method, by sitting there and just speaking to your loved ones. And what's amazing is that the more that you speak to them, the more that you'll notice them around you, the more that you'll notice that they send signs, the more that you'll feel their presence around you, the more that you'll get dreams of them, and the more that you'll begin to recognize them within your everyday life. Because the hardest thing is, is when we lose a loved one. When we lose a loved one, we lose their physical presence. But as a medium, I can tell you one of the best ways to heal and to help yourself is by understanding that their spiritual presence is there. And once you realize their spiritual presence is there, once you realize that they're with you, watching you, guiding you, it's amazing because you don't have to worry. And I'm telling you that for one reason. Imagine imagine me telling you that your loved ones in spirit see everything that's going to happen in your life. They see the challenges that you're going through right now, but they also see that there's a way that you're going to get through them. Well, I'm here right now telling you that same thing. I'm telling you that they know you're going to get through it. I'm telling you that they believe in you. I'm telling you that your loved ones in spirit still want the best for you. And that's the reason why they come through and communicate. So that being said, what I want you to know is your loved ones in spirit can be reached anytime, anywhere. Just send them a thought. And thoughts work not just for your loved ones in spirit. Like I said, there's so many ways that we can use thoughts. You can send healing thoughts any place, anytime, anywhere, and they work. It's the reason why, if you guys believe in prayer chains, how many believe in, in prayer chains? Because I'm telling you they work, okay? Prayer chains work for two reasons. One, because of the fact that we're set, we're sending messages to our angels, ancestors, spirit guides, God, everybody in heaven, asking them to, to please come over and watch over this one person who's sick, that's ailing, that needs help. But also prayers work and thoughts work for another reason because you're sending your energy with them. So you know what's crazy is this. I'm going to tell you the story. So somebody just recently, actually, I'm going to write a newsletter about this. This would be a really good newsletter. I was thinking about a new topic to write about. So somebody came to me during the pandemic. I mean, a lot of people came to me during the pandemic, but one woman in particular, she was so upset. So literally her mom was in a nursing home. And once COVID-19 happened, they literally locked her out of the nursing home. Like that was it. She couldn't see her mom couldn't, couldn't spend time with their mom. And she would go to go to see her mom every morning and every night before work and after work. Every day, this woman went to see her mother. Why? Because her mom had dementia. And because her mother had dementia, she was so afraid of her mother forgetting who she was. She was so afraid of her mother being scared that she was in this place alone. Her mom would get very forgetful. And she was so scared that if she went, you know, a year's time, it ends up being a year that she was without seeing her daughter. She was scared that if she went a year without seeing her mom, her mom would forget where she was, forget who she was, forget all of these things. And, you know, for her, she couldn't use things like iPads or phones or anything like that to communicate with her mom. I mean, she she could do it on occasion, like the nurses would put the phone up to her mother's ear, but her mom didn't have an iPad, didn't know how to use an iPad. They were short staffed because of the pandemic. And, you know, unfortunately, I guess the facility where she was, they just weren't helping residents out with the iPad. So her only recourse was to call her mom every night. And I got to tell you, one of the things that 
that uh, her father and spirit told me is he told me to send some of her energy to her mom. Every night he said, you know, tell your mom I'm watching over. So tell your mom you're watching over her. You're, um, you're wishing the best for her, that you're still there with her. You still love her. Think all of these thoughts to her. Send her good memories. Send her thoughts that you had of visiting her. Send her all of these things so your energy stays with her. Well, don't you know that the that the daughter said, I'm going to do that. And literally between phone calls, before she would go to bed, she would literally send positive thoughts to her mom and say, mom, you know, I'm here with you. I didn't forget about you. I'm going to be there as soon as I can. I love you. And even though her mom was living every day, she would send these thoughts. And then once restrictions lifted about a year later, it was about eight months later, she was able to go back to that nursing home. And don't you know that her mom didn't forget about her? And it was actually funny because her mom forgot about other family members, but didn't forget about that daughter. Well, this is what I'm talking about is that thoughts are so, so powerful. This isn't wishful thinking. And it drives me crazy when people say that we our thoughts mean something. They have energy. You can actually measure a thought, which is so incredible. And that's the way that our loved ones get in touch with us. We can get in touch with them, but also we can, excuse me, we can use our energy here in this world to do good. So I just wanted to share that with all of you because so many times we're bombarded with the negative. We're bombarded with negative thoughts, with bad energy, with negative energy, with all of these things. But what I want you to know as well is that you can go and send positive thoughts as well. It doesn't have to be all negative. So I just want you to, th to think about that and also let you know that even as mediums, that's how we communicate with your loved ones. You know, when I talk to your loved ones in spirit, it's amazing because I wish you guys could see what happens behind the scenes, like what happens all in my head. Like I try to tell you guys as I'm doing a reading, like I'll explain what it is that I'm seeing or how the spirits are showing me things. But literally when I'm communicating with your loved ones, what you guys don't see is I'm asking them questions in my head. So I'm asking your loved ones, what's your name? How did you die? What messages do you have for your loved ones? Who are you looking for? You know, how can you help them here in this world? All of these different things. And that's one of the things that, um, oh my God, thank you so much, Veronica. She just sent, she just sent me a super chat. She goes, thank you so much. I lost my precious dad to COVID. This really has helped me. I'm reading your book. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. What I want you to know is this. What I want you to know is that as a medium, I have those conversations with your loved ones in spirit. So your loved ones in spirit, when I see them, when I say your mom's behind you, your dad's behind you, you know, they don't just come through and say, oh yeah, tell my daughter this, tell my daughter that. It's a conversation back and forth. I'm asking them for their name, their the day that they died, important details. I'm asking them all these different things to find out the reason why they're coming through. Now, that being said, do your loved ones listen to everything that I say? Absolutely not. You know, I'll ask them certain questions. I'll ask them their name, their date, their who, who, who died, what they're trying to say, so on and so forth. Some souls will come through and tell me everything. They'll tell me their, their, I mean, they'll tell me everything. They'll tell me their name, their date of birth, their bra size, you name it. They'll come in and tell me, all right? Then there's other souls that don't care about the questions that I'm asking them and just want to stick to one dialogue. There's one thing that they want to say or one thing that they want to, that they want to get through. You know, it's all up to them. But my point is, is that it's a conversation back and forth. It's a conversation in my head that I'm having with your loved ones in spirit and they're having back. And I'm telling you that because of the fact that you can have that same conversation with them. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, Tanisha goes, bra size, oh, that's funny. It's true. They tell you everything, everything sometimes. I've never heard that. I'll be honest. I never heard that. I was kidding. But, you know, who knows? Maybe one day I will. I don't know. But what I'll tell you is this. What I'll tell you is that it's important for one reason. It's important because you can have those conversations without a medium. Please know that literally the same way that we send text messages here in this world, text messages are energy. We send a text message on our phone. It goes up through the year, through the cloud. The energy is sent to it finds someone else's phone in the world instantaneously. It's amazing that now if you have an iPhone, if you have iMessage, all right, you can go, you can go. Oh, thank you, um, uh, Kaylee. You can literally go and send a text message right at this exact moment, okay, to somebody in Hong Kong and they'll get it in an instant. Why? It's energy. It goes from device to device. Well, spirit energy works the same way. It works through our thoughts. So literally, when you think about your loved ones, you just send a message to them. It's that easy. So talk to your loved ones, have conversations with them, tell them how they can help you. And remember one thing, they are always with you. So before I let you go, I want to remind you, all right, here's all the places because everyone's asking me, Matt, how do I get a reading with you? 
Guys, there's only two ways to get a reading with me. There are no private readings. The only way to get a reading with me is to come and join me at a live online group reading. Okay, the dates are up on my website. There's only actually two dates left on my website. There's only two dates for those online readings left because then I'm going back on the road. It's only $19 to attend an online reading. And then you can also come and see me live in person. For those of you who want to come and meet me in person, I'm coming to Detroit, Michigan, Concord, New Hampshire, Tampa, Florida, Orange Park, Florida, Northfield Park, Ohio. I'm coming to Biloxi, Mississippi, Cabazon, California, Lancaster, California, Reno, Nevada, uh, Newark, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Rutland, Vermont, Worcester, Massachusetts, and St. Louis, Missouri. And if I didn't, if I didn't say your city or state, it's probably sold out. So that being said, these events sell out really quick, whether you attend online or in person, you've got to get your tickets right now by going to meetmattfraser.com. All right. Because if dead people can find me, you can find me, meetmattfraser.com. And one last thing, I also want to thank you guys so much. I just found out today, you're not going to believe this. My new book, We Never Die, is on the New York Times bestseller week for the second week in a row, you guys. I cannot believe this. The second week in a row, We Never Die, uh, Secrets of the Afterlife has made it for the second week on the New York Times bestseller list. I am beside myself. I am like, you guys are going to make me pass out. So um, thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for all of you who bought uh, books for family members, for friends. And to celebrate, I will be um, signing them September 8th. So uh, tomorrow I'll be doing a live book signing on Facebook where you can get autographed copies on my page. So I want to thank you guys so much for that. Royce is doing fantastic for all of you asking. Alexa is doing fantastic. She's actually feeding him right now. But I wanted to come on, come on and share some positivity. To share some positivity. I wanted to share some ways uh, to learn to communicate with your loved ones. And I think it's so funny. Rosalina goes, Matt, it's so hard to talk to. It's really not. Come to an online reading that you can attend from Canada. You can come to, you can attend from Australia. I've read people from the UK, from the from Australia, from Canada, from all different states. All you have to do is sign up on my website. The key is getting in early before we're all sold out. So right now there's only two online group readings left. So uh, I hope you'll come and join me. In the meantime, try it. Talk to your loved ones. Speak to them in your head. Ask them to help you. Tell them what's going on in your life. And remember one thing, we never die. It's just a change in worlds. So until next time, I'll see you soon. And remember, your loved ones are always with you.